Hello, it's me, Arisa Gaming, and I have a short video for you today. I wanted to talk about the Ice Maker building because this recently got gigabuffed as part of the Frosty Planet Pack update, and I think that's flown a little bit under the radar. So this building, what it used to do, it used to use 60 watts of power and it would turn water into ice. The duplicates would have to load the water from a pitcher pump into the machine and it would automatically make it into ice. It would cool it down to minus 20 degrees C and then the duplicate can collect the ice or an auto sweeper can collect it and store it wherever you want. Uh, and the building itself would generate 16 kDTUs per second of heat and it would cool down the ice by 20 kDTUs per second. Well, it would cool down the water. So you have a net heat deletion of 4 kDTUs uh, per second per machine. So that wasn't a huge amount. You were using 60 watts to delete uh, 4 kDTUs, and the result was about 16 watts per kDTU of heat deleted, which was not great. However, they have buffed this building now. So now the building uses 240 watts, and it cools down the ice at 4 times the rate that it did previously. Um, so now it's cooling it down at a rate of 80 kDTUs per second. But the heat generation of the building has still been left at 16 kDTUs. So you actually have 64 kDTUs per second of heat being deleted per machine. Uh, so for 240 watts, that, that brings that cost down to 3.75 watts per DTU, per kDTU. So the building is over four times as efficient at deleting heat for the amount of power you put in. Uh, so this could have ramifications for playing on Oasis. So you'll see we're on an Oasis asteroid here. If we just reveal the whole place, there we go. Um, you can see that the asteroid is surrounded by very hot sand. And if you don't have a cool geyser immediately near you, you might struggle with a lot of heat coming in that you don't want to come in. And you might uh, not have anywhere to dump all the excess heat that your base is generating. Um, previously on this channel, we've talked about builds that use ethanol produced from arbor trees to delete heat due to specific heat capacity differences. We've talked about using the sauna recreational building to delete heat as it turns the steam into 80 degrees C water no matter what. And frankly, the ice maker is more practical now um, for general use for deleting heat on Oasis. <laughs> because it's much easier to set up than the sauna and it's way more power efficient than the ethanol heat deletion method we talked about. So I'm not sure this is going to be a sandbox showcase video or not because I imagine this might get patched out fairly quickly because it's quite quite an odd oversight to be honest. They also made it so you can produce snow from the building now which I presume is why they updated it in the first place so you can feed the bonbon trees. Uh, but just very quickly I'm going to show you a, a sort of example build that you could do. Uh, to start deleting heat right away. So the first thing you'd do is you'd set up a little uh, just a little tank with some water in it. So it doesn't need to be huge. Uh, we'll just put a pitcher pump on that and we'll just fill that with a little bit of water. There's plenty of water available to start with on Oasis so you can fill up a little bit, um, a little tank like this without any huge issues. Here's some water just immediately below the printing pod. So, we'll just put some water on the bottom two tiles. That's absolutely fine. And then we'll put in a few ice makers. So, the duplicant does unfortunately have to load the ice into the ice makers. Uh, so, what we'll do is we'll put four of them over here. Uh, each of these does use 240 watts. So, you can run four ice makers off of a single wire. So, we'll put that down here. Uh, you can power this however you want. Uh, just very quickly, I might show you something you might do. Um, because Oasis has so much sand and sandstone, you do actually start with a hatch in this tile here. It's always this tile to the left of the printing pod. This is the same for most maps, and I'll keep saying it. <laughs> I will keep saying it. So, here is your hatch, uh, as promised. So you could set up hatch ranches on Oasis pretty easily and, and you have endless materials to feed them. So I'm going to assume that you're probably going to set up something like this with coal power. So we'll just put, we'll just do a little clearing over here. And what we'll do is, how many tiles is this? 11, yeah that'll do. 
what we'll do is we'll just put three coal generators over here. Doesn't really matter what you make them out of. You start with plenty of aluminium. It's a fairly conductive metal. That's pretty good. General, uh, you'll want to make a smart battery to plug into these. We'll do it like this. Um, you probably won't need three up and running constantly to keep one of these wires on. Two will probably do, but generally I set up three in case we end up hooking up conductive wire later. So that wire can just go in here. You would make some automation wire and that would go from the smart battery to the coal power plants. And what I typically do for the smart battery is I set it to 10 and 90. Um, the reason I do this is because when the coal generators are generating, once they go over the threshold, they'll keep going for a very small amount of time. So if it's at 100, you're wasting a small amount of power. And similarly, if it gets all the way down to zero, you have no leeway if you need to restart it. So I set it to 10 and 90 usually. Um, and this is just the smart power. So your duplicants can just come and deliver the coal from your hatch ranches to these things. Um, and again, you could also use a... You could use an auto sweeper uh, to pick it up from a from a chute or a conveyor receptacle uh, that will be full of coal so that's absolutely fine and this auto sweeper is in range of all three coal generators so that's why i like to put them together like this right so we have some coal coming in duplicates are loading all of these up and we've got a conveyor rail that's going to send some coal to this receptacle as well so now what the duplicates are doing is they're picking up the water from the pitcher pump they're putting it in each of these machines uh, it takes about 3.5 seconds for the ice maker to start up, during which time it is consuming power and it's not cooling down the liquid. Uh, but you can see they fill it up with 60 kilograms of water at a time. Um, so we've got four of them here. I'm going to fill them up. You can see it's got the little startup animation, then it gets to work. Um, and then if we look at this, the water is actually cooling quite quickly. Now, what we could do just to actually measure the amount of heat that's being deleted Let's set up a timer sensor. We'll just plug that in here to this one. Uh, we'll set the red duration to 1, and we'll set the green duration to 13.5. So the reason we're doing that is so that we can... It can power up, and then we've got 10 seconds of continuous operation, so we can see how much the water is actually being cooled by. So we'll just wait for this to reset. Okay, so it's reset. The starting temperature is 17.6 degrees C. So it, it's turning on. Now the 3.5 seconds have passed. And the temperature is starting to decrease. So we'll see it go down for about 10 seconds. And then the final temperature is actually 14.4 degrees C. So that's 3.2 degrees of cooling. Now, because this is 60 kilograms of water, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4.179, that does result in about 80 kDTUs per second of cooling. And the heat generation is still only 16 kDTUs. The game confirms this. So, the result is we're deleting 256 kDTUs of heat per second while these ice makers are running. So what we'll do is we'll actually just surround this whole area in some insulated tile and we'll let the duplicants uh, get on with that so yeah we'll just close this off we'll leave a little bit of extra room for the uh, for the pitcher pump uh, one thing as well uh, what we'll do is we'll set up an auto sweeper in here so we can reach all of the ice makers and then once they're actually finished turning the water into ice or snow it doesn't really matter too much I prefer ice because there's a bit more thermal conductivity what we'll do then is we'll just make a conveyor loader, put that here, and then that's going to load a conveyor loop where we just cycle it into this pool of water, which we're recycling continuously. So what we'll do is we'll put a put a bridge here. We'll remove the we'll remove the conveyor rail in there, and we'll put another bridge here. So what that's going to do, because the, the conveyor rail starts on the loop at this bridge, and then it goes onto this bridge, this will keep the loop circulating with ice that gets loaded from the ice makers, and it will keep recirculating it until it melts off the rail. Um, conveyor rails are very good for melting solids, when, especially when the solids are going through a liquid. It's very conductive. 
Um, and then any remaining ice will just stay up here and wait wait to get melted. So we'll set this to um, we'll set this to liquefiables, and then we'll see how it goes. So the room at the moment is mostly around 24, 25 degrees C. The ice makers are running and they're a bit hotter because there's low pressure here and the building's generating heat. But what we're going to do, also the coal generators are running and they're producing 9 kDTUs of heat each while they're running. So overall, we would definitely expect stuff to uh, heat up in this room, all things considered. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed it up and we'll see exactly what happens. So, we've been letting this run for a little while. We've made a few small modifications. So, just to illustrate the concept, we've made the conveyor rail significantly longer, and now it's running along the whole room. The whole room is filled with a small amount of water that we can pitch a pump up. The duplicants are all feeling pretty chilly as a result, but they can stand up here if they want. And uh, now we're able to load the ice into this, and it's able to distribute its uh, chilling effect a lot more effectively. So let's actually speed this up and see and see exactly what the heat deletion effect is. So, we're back. As you can see, we haven't been running this for very long at all, and the room is already extremely cold. These things have been deleting a lot of heat. The duplicates are all getting very chilly. Uh, so, this illustrates how relatively easy it is to set up these ice makers in such a way that you're able to continuously conduct the, uh, the heat into the ice that's produced, and thus delete all the heat. Um, we haven't really been adding anything into the system. We've been adding a little bit of 30 degree oxygen. The duplicates have been going to the loo and we, we dumped a few nutrient bars in here for them. But it's really not a lot of effort for them at all. Um, obviously they're asleep at the moment, so that's not ideal. Um, so these aren't producing while the duplicates are asleep. You may want to have your schedule set up so that there's always a duplicate available to do this. But as you can see, it's not a huge amount of labor. They only have to load up for a little bit. Um, because it takes about 10 seconds of running to cool the water by 3.2 degrees C. Um, it's going to take about 100 seconds to cool down a full load of water into ice. And as the temperature of the room decreases further, it should be noted uh, that it won't take as long for it to turn into ice in the machines. Now, the final temperature of this room will be about 3 degrees Celsius. Because um, if the ice won't actually remelt, you can't reload it into the ice maker. So that's the lowest temperature that you can get with such a setup. But if you're just trying to delete the heat from your base, um, as you can see, it's very effective at neutralizing the heat generated by the coal generators, by the ice makers themselves. You can set this up uninsulated at the bottom of your insulated base, and it will just cool down the entire base and you won't have any issues. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Very short video today, but I just wanted to let you know that the Ice Maker has been buffed and it is now probably the most viable method of early game heat deletion. Now, late game, you're obviously going to want to set up steam turbines because they generate power by deleting heat. But early game, before you have that technology, the Ice Maker is very easy to uh, build. It doesn't require a lot of technology. Um, the conveyor rail is certainly helpful for melting the ice, but you can also just take all the ice and stick it at the bottom of your water tank, or even get the duplicates to make temp shift plates out of it if you really feel like it. Um, this is very accessible very early on, and it's a very powerful cooling system. And you don't have to do this on Oasis, you can do this on any asteroid where you might have heat issues. You can see the duplicates are all <laughs> a bit confused about what to do. But uh, yeah. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Um, we'll put this in the Sandbox Showcase playlist, but I wouldn't be surprised if Clay patched this out because this seems a bit stronger than they intended. <laughs> um, we do stream on Twitch. We're currently doing a Frosty Planet Pack run on the series Asteroid where we're generating far too much carbon dioxide and heat deletion definitely isn't a priority. But uh, yep, uh, that's going pretty well. We have all sorts of other tier list and discussion and build guide videos about oxygen not included on the youtube channel as well uh, you can become a member and get access to special emotes to use and there's lots of good stuff in general and there's a discord where we all hang out as well but uh thanks very much for watching and i'll see you soon take it away whiskers bye for now whiskers sends thanks to the following twitch subscribers and youtube members 999999999 Cyberdyne Yeah 
FRD. GM Hero, Ku Giargizia, Neo Deus Machina, Sinister Plank, Static Icarus, Sweet Danger Kitty, The Back Guy, The Max Not Binary, and Uglavisk.